Hey everybody, this is PJ Riley from Lancaster Archery. Outside our pro shop today, we wanted to tell you a brand new bow from the folks at Darton. This is the Prelude E32. Great new bow from the folks at Darton, 32 inches axle to axle. This bow is built primarily for one thing, and that is speed. We'll tell you how they do that in a second, but first let's get the specs for the Prelude E32. The Prelude E32 measures 32 inches axle to axle. It's got a brace height of six inches, IBO speed rating of 342 feet per second. Let off is 80%. The draw length range on a rotating mod is gonna go from 27 inches to 30 and a half inches. The bow is gonna weigh 4.9 pounds and it's gonna be available in peak draw weights of 40, 50, 60, 70, and 80 pounds. All right, so the Prelude E32, what are we looking at here? Well, first off, check out that cam. This is a brand new cam from the folks at Darton. And you know, as we mentioned, this is a speed bow, 342 feet per second. So it is going to have an aggressive cam and you can see this flat spot right here. That's gonna be the last hump that you get over before the cam rolls over and you definitely feel it right there. You definitely feel that extra effort to get this part of the cam to roll over. I wouldn't say that it's uh, super harsh, but you definitely notice it. But again, speed bow, you got to do something to create that speed. That's how Darton has it with this unique cam design right there. But in the cam here, you heard me say rotating mod from 27 inches to 30 and a half inches. Uh, so that this is your rotating mod right here, and it is going to be adjustable in quarter inch increments. So that's a huge benefit to archers. You know, some if you're going just in half inch increments, that's not always perfect for you. You may need just a little bit more or a little bit less, and to be able to adjust the draw length by rotating the mod to quarter inches, that just lessens the amount of cable twisting you have to do. That's how you affect um, the draw length in between uh, the mod position. So if it's half inch and you have to twist cables, you could have to twist a lot to get to a quarter inch in there. But by being able to adjust this in quarter inch increments, now you're only fine tuning if you have to, uh, with the cables to get that draw length exactly where you want it. And you can see right here, this big paddle, this is gonna be your uh, draw stop. So it is a cable stop, but with that much surface area contacting the cable, it feels like a limb stop. There's so much surface area when you get the timing right and this paddle comes around and hits that cable, man, it just feels super solid. There is still that little bit of give if you know you, if that's what you need for your shot activation, and you like to expand just a little bit, you still have that ability, but boy, it feels rock solid when you hit that uh, draw stop there. Now, in the kit with the bow, so we mentioned the specs for the let off being 80%. You are going to get some add on pieces that you're going to connect onto the draw stop there. Basically, they look just like it and they're different thicknesses. That's going to allow you to adjust the let off from 65% up to 80%. You're going to get three of them. So you're going to get 65, 70, 75%. Uh, that's what will you detach on the end there to affect that let off. You know, if you want to have a little more holding weight, you can do that. And you, again, as I said, you do get that with the bow. All right. So you heard me mention that this is the E32. That is the E system is a proprietary system that Darton has come up with. And what they're referring to is this system right here. This is the E system. So what it is, is we have a split yoke. That's going to come down through the roller and go right back up and connect to the cam. So what Darton says that does is it helps balance the load. We've got a beefy quarter inch axle in here with five eighths inch bearings. So we got a burly system to handle the speeds generated by this bow, but just to help uh, even out the pressure on the axle, the limbs, the bearings, this E system here. So it's gonna be pulling down on the limbs and it's also gonna be pulling down on the cam. So you have three 
uh, you know, spaced out points of contact pulling down on everything. It just helps uh, to even out that load and it makes it more forgiving, uh, not quite as harsh uh, as some other cam systems. So that is a system that Darton runs on several of its bows. It's, you know, they've had great success with it. Uh, again, just creates a, a very forgiving shot. You know, and you don't notice it. You know, you might think with that roller there that that creates uh, some extra string movement. You might think, you know, that you can just feel that cable, especially with that serving going through the roller. I'll say I don't notice it uh, any different than drawing other kind of bows. Uh, so for the benefits that it gives you, I don't really notice any drawbacks from it. All right, coming down here uh, to the limb pocket. So these limbs, how they connect in the pocket, they are not just resting in there. I don't know if you can see, but there is actually a pin in there that you're going to lay the limbs. There's a hole drilled in the limb. The limb's going to sit over top of that pin, and then they're going to rest in the pocket. Just something to help with that stability of the connection there in the limb pocket. You are going to have an Allen screw right here. This is going to be what you're going to loosen when you change uh, the draw weight. So loosen that up, take turns out, and then you can see it slides on that in that slot right there. And then when you get a position, lock it back down. Again, just something else to help keep this thing solid and stable. You do have two connection points for the limbs. You've got them connected in the pocket there and then back here at the rocker they sit inside. So the two connection points, these limbs aren't going anywhere once you've got them in position. Then one of the things that Darton's really become known for the last couple of years is this riser. It's made out of a special type of aluminum that's called 7075T611. So if you look that up, you'll see that that is a certain type of aluminum that is super stiff, super rigid. That's what we want as archers. We don't want a lot of flex in this thing. So with that uh, 7075T611 aluminum, plus it is pre-stretched and pre-stressed, th those are finishing processes uh, as part of this riser done, again, just to make it super rigid. And what you notice at full draw, this thing just holds nice. You don't feel much hand shock. Uh, I will say even for a speed bow, this bow doesn't generate much hand shock at all. Sometimes those speed bows can be a little bit harsh in your hand. This is not one of those. Uh, coming down to the roller, it is, as you can see, adjustable. So right here, you've got the Allen screws. You can see my indicator marks. So I can move these, the cable position in the roller. I can move it left or right, you know, in tuning or in fletching clearance, whatever you're trying to accomplish, you do have lateral adjustability uh, with that cable arm. Here in the riser area, we've got lots of connection points for a rest. You've got your two burger holes here. So if your rest arm has enough room, you can have two bolts in there two bolts, that rest isn't moving. Uh, you know, we've all experienced rest like this sometimes. If, you know, some kind of contact top or bottom, you can wrench that rest up or down, which that's never good. Uh, so you, if, you're, if there's enough room in the arm, you can get two bolts in there. Also, what we have in here is we do have a dovetail, so you can mount one of those QAD integrated rests. You can mount one of those. And then they also have it drilled to receive the uh, Hamsky's proprietary um, rest mount. So if you've got the Hamsky Epsilon rest, you know, that's a, a, a limb driven rest from the folks at Hamsky. If you have that rest, they have a special bracket that you takes two screws and you kind of screw a dovetail on top of the existing dovetail that's in here. And that allows you to um, mount the Hamsky Epsilon rest. The grip. This is a new grip design for Darton this year. And it is super comfortable. Uh, in the past, their grips were very thick uh, forward and back. I liked it. Um, I still uh, This one I like as well. Uh, it's thinner front to back, so it's going to probably fit. I have big hands anyway, so those thicker um, 
gri the thicker grip didn't bother me, but I know some folks with smaller hands, it felt a little too thick. This one, uh, you will not have that problem. You can see that angle there. It is nice and comfortable. There is a little bit of angling back, but not much. It's uh, a good position there, very repeatable. You can get your hand in there. Flat surface here, slightly rounded, but there is a good flat surface for indexing your hand. And of course, we do have the channel in the front here so that you can rest your finger, make sure everything's in the right place. You know, however you want to set up, you can feel if you're too far over, get your hand back. You know, just a good reference that you can check every time just by feeling to make sure your hand's in the right position. All right, coming down the bow, stabilizer options. We do have multiple options here. You're gonna have one mounting position right under the grip, that's pretty standard. You're gonna have another one down low that will come with this vibration dampener in it. This is, you know, uh, does have dampening material in it. It is flexible, so this is gonna help attack some of that vibration right at the limb pocket. But if you want to mount a stabilizer there, you can do that as well. But this vibration dampener, it does come with the bow. And then of course, on the back, you do have a threaded hole here for mounting stabilizer if you like to run it from the back of the bow. Uh, another something else the bow comes with for vibration dampening is you are going to have your vibration dampeners in the limbs, the so split limb vibration dampeners, top and bottom, have that as well to help with that vibration control. All right, so shooting the Prelude E32. Since this is a speedbow, that's primarily what it's built for, let's go into the shop and we're gonna shoot through a chronograph, see what kind of speeds we can get. All right, we got our last chance draw scale. We're gonna get the draw weight for the Prelude 32. And we got 69.7. All right, let's check the weight that we're going to have for our test arrow. We got a Black Eagle Spartan 250 spine, and it weighs 475 and a half grains. All right, so Dart and Prelude 32. We're going to take a shot through the chronograph. We know that the bow is set at 30 inches and at 69.8 pounds, basically 70 pounds. Uh, the draw length is 30 inches and our arrow weighs 475 and a half grains. Let's see what speed we get. Two hundred ninety eight feet per second. So two hundred ninety eight feet per second with that four hundred and seventy six grain arrow. That's pretty good. That's pretty fast. The IBO speed rating is three forty two but our arrow is 127 grains heavier than what you use for IBO speed ratings. 70 pound bow, you would use a 350 grain arrow to get your speed rating. Our arrow weighed 127 grains more than that. And if you do the math, there's calculations out there, it comes out to about that 340 to 342 feet per second. Um, so that is a screaming fast bow. I mean, 300 feet per second shooting a 477 grain arrow. That's fast. Uh, and there is so much kinetic energy in there. I checked the calculations one time. The kinetic energy that you get from an arrow move, from an arrow that heavy moving that fast basically is sufficient, according to the charts, for any game on the planet. That's heavier than what you need for moose, Cape buffalo, anything out there, that arrow is basically going to go through any animal you want it to. All right, so when you make a speed bow, in order to get those higher end speeds, you are going to have to sacrifice some of the shooting experience to get that extra speed. Now, how you do that, uh, I think, doesn't have to be super harsh. There are speed bows out there that just don't have much of a valley, and you come back to full uh, draw and I mean if you just relax even a little bit it wants to pull your shoulder forward. I will say with this the valley at the back end is super comfortable. I have it on 80% let off uh, so that's the max let off and even though this is a speed bow this is one of those bows I come back to full draw and I feel like 
I gotta push forward. You know, I could stand there and just hold it comfortably at full draw, even though it is a speedboat. However, again, you definitely feel when you come to this last part of the cam rolling over. The draw cycle is super smooth until you hit that last portion, and then there is some extra effort required to get that cam to finally roll over the last portion. That's just one of the byproducts of a speedbell. I will say it's not necessarily harsh, it's not something uh, that's uncomfortable, but it is something you have to be ready for. If, you, if what you're looking for is a speedboat, I would say uh, the best thing to do is to shoot this several times. What I found is, is it, after a couple of draws, I knew what to expect and then I could adjust accordingly in my draw. Once I knew what to expect, it didn't bother me at all. And I am not a fan of super aggressive cams. This one, once I knew what was coming, it was fine. Then, you know, aside from that, of course, speed is great. We want these things to aim well and shoot well. Uh, so I was able to tune this right out of the box, just set my center shot, my knock height, first shot, got a perfect bullet hole, sat on the range there at 20 yards, broke a couple arrow parts there, shot off some fletchings. I mean, this thing, it held nice, aimed nice. The shot, uh, you know, during and after, was super comfortable, I was able to get that accuracy dialed in. So this is a nice shooting bow. All right, so that is the Darton Prelude E32. Great, super fast bow from the folks at Darton. They've got a lot of that Darton engineering built into it. I should mention, you know, uh, compound bows. Whatever compound bow you shoot, you are shooting some Darton technology. They did a lot to basically modernize what we know as the compound bow. Darton um, was the one, were the people who originated the, a lot of that technology. Uh, so they know compound bows is what I'm saying. So if you like this video, give us thumbs up. If you wanna see more videos like it, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Don't forget to click that bell to get notifications whenever we put out new videos. And as always, if you have any questions, you can visit us at LancasterArchery.com.